I've come to tell you that we all will experience trouble. Trouble will track you down. When you've been messed over, when your heart been broken, prayer. When the world won't comfort you any longer, prayer. When you don't find a way to get out of your situation, prayer. Change your faith. Amen. How many believe that in this house that yeah. God will? Amen. Amen. Answer prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. What a befitting song. Yeah. Amen. For this sermonic presentation. Yeah. Amen. When I was contacted by Dick and Jones immediately, I consulted the master right. to find what shall I say to see the grove. Right. And God led me to the street called Philippians Come on. Come on. four, yes. six, and seven. Amen. If you don't mind, can you stand with me as we read this couple of verses? Mm -hmm. Amen. Blessed. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And the peace of God. We want to talk about today the peace of prayer. Amen. 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 The peace of prayer. God, it's me again. Your humble servant bowing before you, simply asking that you might make this preaching easy. Oh God, take me now within the depths of your bosom and release me today that I might fall down preaching the word of God. Take me now and use me as you please. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. The peace of prayer. Most of us in this sacred place called sanctuary have at some point of time or another experienced trouble in our lives. There has been something in our past or in our present that has caused us worry. That has caused us pain. That has caused us distress suffering, anguish, aggravation, and even irritation. It may have been a family member. It may have been a long time friend. It may have been an on the job situation. It could have been a financial issue. It may have been a sickness in the body. And it is even a good possibility that somebody has experienced trouble in church. Do 
do I have a witness here? Amen. I'm talking about a time when everything seems to go against you. I'm talking about a time when your life is flooded with turmoil and melancholy. I'm talking about a time when you've corrected this situation here. And something else has the audacity to become unraveled over there. And regardless of how saved and sanctified you are, I've come to tell you that we all will experience trouble. Do I have a witness here? And, and it's a funny thing about trouble because choir, you don't have to look for trouble. Uh huh. No, 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 no. But trouble will find you. So all you have to do is wake up in the morning. Hey Amen. Get out of your bed. Walk down the hallway. And I come to tell you that trouble will track you down. Do I have a witness here? Praise God. And when trouble finds you, when trouble finds you, it then becomes so very hard to find. A place of peace. Yes. Amen. Amen. But I came to tell somebody today that prayer, prayer. changes things. Yes. Uh huh. Do I have a witness? Yes. Amen. I'm talking about when your heart has been broken, prayer, prayer. changes things. Yes. Uh huh. When you've been messed over, yes. prayer yes. changes things. Yes. Uh huh. When folk don't want to listen to you, yes. prayer. Changes things when the world won't comfort you any longer. Prayer changes things. Amen. When 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 you don't find a way to get out of your situation, prayer changes things. When the children have gone crazy, prayer changes things. Why well, dare you to look to the hills from which cometh your help? Amen. Somebody told me that he's an on time God. Yes, he is. I wish I had somebody to help me out here. Amen. Who understands what I'm talking about? Because I mean, somebody has went down. You, you've almost given up. Amen, man. You almost threw in the towel and you went down on your bended knees and found peace in prayer. And now you can testify that when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me. Oh my God. Y'all mind if I preach this thing for a few minutes? Amen. Come with me now as we tiptoe through the tulips of the text. Amen. So Paul starts the portion of the letter off to the church at Philippi while he was in prison in Rome. Amen. He gives holy accolades to those whom he had labored with in the vineyard of God. Yes, uh, in verse number one, he calls them his dearly beloved. Yes. He said they were those he longed for. Yes. He called them his joy. Yes. He calls them his, 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 his crown. Uh -huh. Which lets us know here that uh, there was something about Paul uh, and the church at Philippi that was kind of connected. Yeah. Amen. He spoke very highly of the church of Philippi. Yeah. Yeah. And he was very fond of the church at Philippi. Yeah. And you know when you're fond of anyone. And when, when you appreciate anyone. Yeah. And, and when folk do good. It is good sometimes to give them encouraging words. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Amen. We're living in a day and time where folk can only point out what you did wrong. Yeah. Amen. They seem to have seasonal blindness yeah. from what you do right. Yeah. I come to tell you that we do right most of the time. Yeah. And if you can only appreciate me when I'm doing something wrong, keep your mouth closed. Yeah. Praise God. I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching, but I came to tell you that if I do right most of the time, yeah. And you say nothing when I do right. When I do wrong, keep your mouth closed. Just touch somebody and say, hey, you know that's right. Praise God. So Paul says to the church at Philippi, he says, be careful 
for nothing. And the word careful in the text comes to us from the Greek word merimnaho. And it means to exercise thought. It means to be anxious. It means to be apprehensive. It means, in other words, to worry. Paul here is focusing on believers and their attitudes when faced with the daily struggles of life. He tells them that he felt what they were going through and he understood the weight that was on their shoulders, but don't worry. Now don't worry, he did not say don't care. Amen, but he said don't worry. You see, there's a difference between don't care and don't worry. Amen, don't care means don't be concerned. Don't care means have no interest. Don't care means uh, it does not bother you. But Paul says, don't worry. And don't worry means remember who's in control. Do I have a witness here? It tells me that whatever I'm going through, whatever the devil throws my way, whatever the problem is, I know somebody who's bigger than what I'm going through. Do I have a witness here? And told me somebody came in here this morning with trouble on your mind. I mean, your situation is getting the best of you and you can't seem to shake this thing called anxiety. But God told me to tell you that he's not an absentee landlord. And if you want to know where God is, then touch yourself on the shoulder. Because wherever you are, then that's where God is. Do I have a witness? Amen. If I don't preach no more, I'll preach right there. Amen. Too, too often we get caught up in the problem when the problem is not out of faith in the first place. Amen. The Bible says, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Amen. And that means that God welcomes our problems. But we're so busy trying to rectify the situation ourselves that when we get finished working with it, it's a bigger mess than it started out in the first place. Now all that we can do is sit there, look at it, and worry. But God wants you to know today that, that anything that's pulling you apart is because you allowed it to pull you apart. God told me to tell you, you got a choice. Either you can deal with it or you can give it to God. Yeah. Am I preaching by myself up in there? I said you can deal with it or you can give it to God. Hey Amen. You got a choice. You can choose to walk around with your head down. You can choose to look like you've been defeated. You can choose to look like you're all by yourself. You can choose to look like you don't have a God on your side. Or you can hold your head up and stick your chest out and understand that wherever I am, then that's where God is. And when he gets ready, he's going to get me out of it. Do I have a witness here? Praise God. Yeah, I hear you talking, preacher. I hear you talking, but you don't know what I'm going through. I hear you talking, preacher, but you don't know my situation. I hear you talking, preacher, but you never walked in my shoes. And you're right about that, so I just can't give you a pep talk and leave you just like that. But I got to, I got to tell you what to do when you're going through. He said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. He says, worry about nothing, but do something about everything. Do we have a witness here? Here Paul offers us an antidote to worrying. He says, you must replace worry with something else. And too often we choose to replace worry with the wrong thing. Uh-huh, yeah, we replace worry with the wrong thing. If I can drink enough, then I won't have to worry if I can just smoke enough crack then I won't have to worry if I had enough friends then I won't have to worry if I call up enough people on the telephone then I won't have to worry but I came to tell you today that that you can get drunk as Cooter Brown when you come to that problem is still there 
Hey man, you can have more friends than Donald. I ain't gonna say Donald Trump. You can have more friends than a little bit. But when your friends are gone, that problem is still there. You can be in a room with 200 people and still feel empty on the inside because you're standing next to the wrong one. Do we have witness here? But when you trust in God, when you rely on God to rectify the situation, it is here where you can find a little peace in your life. And that's why Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because Job learned that when difficulty is knocking on the door, you've got to call on a one who specializes in difficult situations. Do I have witness here? Yeah. There's something else here. Yeah. Then he says, with thanksgiving, yeah. uh -huh. make your requests be made known unto God. Yeah. Well, preacher, why must I thank God? Well, you must thank God in order to let God know that you appreciate what he's already done. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. You got to let him know that you appreciate what he's already done for you. Amen. Too often we ask God for other things before we thank God for what he's already done. He's already opened up doors closed in your face. He's already showed you ways out of no ways. He's already turned the tide for you. He's already straightened up some stuff that you messed up yourself. So you need to thank God for what he's already done. Well, preacher, how can I give thanks when I just lost my job? Well, you better thank him anyhow that you haven't lost your mind. That when he gives you a job, you have sense enough to count the money. Do I have a witness here? Well, preacher, how can I thank God when I'm feeling sick in my body? Well, you better thank him anyhow that you ain't dead yet. The dead folk don't feel nothing. Yeah, you might have a little rheumatism in there. You might have a little arthritis. Yeah, the sugar might be high low. But you better pray the mini high. Cause dead folk don't feel nothing. Do I have a witness here? Well, preacher, how can I thank God when my child is incarcerated? Well, you better thank him anyhow that you still got a child. Because somebody last night, somebody's child didn't come home. Somebody last night had to go to the mortuary to identify someone who's down and out. So you better thank him anyhow. Do I have a witness? Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Praise God. You got to thank him anyhow. And when you learn how to thank God, your problems will get smaller. And God will get bigger in your life. And when you've done this, the Bible says that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind. Now anytime there is peace, I'm told that there is a calmness. And we must be mindful to note here uh -huh, that God does not promise to calm your storm. But God promises to calm you while you're going through your storm. You see all that stuff that you're going through. All of the hypertension and all of the anxiety and all of the nervousness and all, all of the stress and strain is not because of your problem but how you choose to deal with your problem. Amen. You can, your peace, my brothers and sisters, it will be at a point in your life where it will mess folk up because they won't understand how in the world you can be so calm when the doctors have given you a bad report. They won't understand 
man. How you can be so nice when the rent man has just stepped a label on your door. They won't understand. How can you be so calm when you don't have a dime to your name? But you can look at them and tell them it's because God has given me a peace that surpasses all understanding. And folk will wonder how can you sing amazing grace? How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me when you're all by yourself. It's because God has given me a peace that surpasses all understanding. I've got to leave you now. But the Bible says in verse number 7 the peace of God. But in verse number 9 the God of peace. What are you saying preacher? If you learn how to pray right he'll give you the peace of God. And if you walk with God he'll give you the God of peace. Do I have a witness here? I feel like preaching now. I believe that somebody in this place can lift up holy hands and say God I thank you because when I was down and out you showed me a peace that surpasses all understanding when I couldn't help myself you showed me a peace that surpasses all understanding and I'm so glad that you don't have to tell me about the goodness of the Lord because I tried him for myself and I know all about it Say yes up in this house. Say yes up in this house. The God I serve will give you peace. He'll give you peace in prayer. He'll give you peace. He'll give you peace. Saints of God, we've, we've lost our, our drive to pray. You don't, you don't find prayer meetings anymore. Where, where folk get together not to testify, but just to call on the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. It's time that we go back. Amen to the good old time. Where we can have an old-fashioned prayer meeting where everybody meet at the altar. And everybody began to call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says that where two or three are assembled together, touching and agreeing, there am I in the midst. Yes, you can pray by yourself. Yes, you can pray in your car and at your home. But there's a special promise when two or three are assembled together, touching and agreeing. I'm finishing out. The peace of prayer. Give God a hand clap of praise. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Just for a couple of seconds, I ask that if there's one who needs a touch from the Lord, if there's one, would, would you come? very quickly because I could talk somebody out of their seats. I could stay here long enough until somebody's gonna begin to trickle down the aisles. But, but it's not that type of party today. If you're serious about a need from God, we're asking that you come. And I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that some miracle is getting ready to happen in this house. Will you come today? Will you come? Will you come? Yeah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Will you come today? Yes, sir. Oh, will you come? Will you come? You. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with today. Amen. 
No problem yes, sir. is too great for God. Yes, sir. Oh, will you come? Will you come? Will, you come? will that be another? Oh, you can come. You can come. I, I won't even ask you today to tell me your problem. He said, if the truth, truth of the matter is, yeah. Brown can do nothing about your problem. Yeah. Now, I have a connection with God so I can go to you, to Christ, for yes. you. Yes. But there's no magic in these hands here. Yes. Your folk coming and touching folk and folk falling out. What? Come on. There's no magic in these hands. Yes. The power of God yes, is what we live by. Yes. The presence of God yes. is how we activate our being. Oh, yes. So, just for a moment, Thank you. in your mind, in your conscience, Thank you, Lord. just tell God about it. Yes, sir. Just for a moment, whatever it is, yes, sir. just tell God about Thank it. You, oh, bless the Lord. Father God, we, we come before you today with a bowed head, with a humble heart. And God, I realize that you are the grand architect of the universe. And I stand in awe at your power today. God, somebody at the altar, God, is dealing with something that they're tired of struggling with. Somebody, Father God, is dealing with a family member that they're at odds with right now. Oh God, if it be in your will, we ask that you will interact with that individual right now and let them know, God, that through this prayer, you are going to rectify the situation. Oh, God, we bind up every demon in this house. We bind up, Father God, every lackadaisical spirit in this place. We bind up every loveless person in this church. But oh God, we tie them together, asking God that you will sanctify them wholly. Yes, sir. Oh God, as only you know how. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Father God, we say thankful, thank you in advance today. Because we know that from our faith, this problem is rectified. And oh God, we just submit and just lay this church at your altar. Oh God, for you to have your way in this place. You know their desires. And you know what they need. So God, have your way. Oh God, in the precious name of Jesus. Bless them, God. Every need. Every desire. Every unconscious thought. Bless it, God. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I would like to ask the church family to remember baby Neely Whit the third. He had a bad asthma attack and had to be lifted to Duke Hospital. And he's better, but he's still a sick baby, two years old. Great. Whit. Great. Someone give God a great hand clap of praise. 
I've come to tell you that we all will experience trouble. Trouble will track you down. When you've been messed over, when your heart has been broken, prayer. When the world won't comfort you any longer, prayer. When you don't find a way to get out of your situation, prayer.